Hi. In this video, we're going to talk about a very basic concept in cryptography or encryption, which is the symmetric key. The uh, symmetric key is actually a concept that was introduced somewhere in the 1970s, and the intention was how to go ahead and send information between two points while making sure that nobody else can actually uh, decrypt the information. Now, symmetric key is obviously the most popular method because it's a lot easier to implement. But however, the uh, the most secure option in today's environments would actually be a symmetric key, which we will talk about in another video. This particular video is trying to demonstrate how symmetric keys actually work. So I've tried to reduce the complexity in it and just basically show the flow of how the uh, relationship or the trust is established between the two partners in the communication. Now, uh, typically what you would have is you would have something like this, which is uh, basically just a, a communication system where you've got server A and you got a user and you've got another user and they both want to communicate with each other. But when they do that, they need to go through a public domain. So essentially what happens is that the user A has a secret key called A and the user B has a secret key called B and then in the middle you have a server that actually goes ahead and does the encryption uh, or you have some kind of framework in between which generates something called a subkey which is used by both of these guys to establish that kind of uh, encryption framework. The, the key concept here is that in a symmetric key what happens is the key that is used to encrypt the data is the exact same key that is used to decrypt the data. So what you really have is once you have a key that can be used to encrypt the data you need to share it with everybody else who you want to communicate to and they will use that key to decrypt information coming from your end. So typically what would happen in this kind of scenario is you have this uh, public domain some kind of key uh, algorithm a generator and it uses some kind of very large prime number. The larger the prime number the better the encryption and therefore the harder it becomes to use something like a brute force attack to determine what key you're using for encryption. The other thing is that every message typically ends up using a new key value. So uh, what typically happens in these kind of scenarios is that every message is encrypted using a different key range. And as such, uh, a message that is decrypted in one particular uh, brute force attack, the same key might not necessarily be working in, uh, in a subsequent key, uh, message, which kind of increases the, uh, the efficiency of the whole process as such. Now, to do this, what typically happens is you will start off with uh, user A contacting the, uh, the the cryptographic algorithm, the subkey generator, and what they do is uh, they generate a combination of the uh, the user secret key and the uh, the subkey to create uh, something like this, which is basically a combination of A plus G is uh, G A, and here A G plus B is G B. So this again lies in the boundary between the user's secret key and the public domain. So you'll see that it's on the boundary between the two of them. And that basically means that this is something that we can transfer to everybody else. Now essentially what happens in this case is that once this particular uh, uh, a, a pseudo key, if you want to think of it that way, is created, we exchange this with the user B. And to do that, what we do is we send it over to the user B and user B sends his over to user A. When we do this, essentially, we've got the information about what's there on the public and we got the information about what's there in B. But we don't individually know what B is. We just have some unique combination of G and B, which could be some very large value. Once this step is complete, what we do next is we go ahead and add our own key to the combination that we just got here. So G B sent over his key pseudo key to us and GA sent over his pseudo key to the other guy and they have that combination available with them and what happens next is that we add our own secret key to this mix to generate a combination called GBA and GAB which is essentially the same it's kind of like multiplication where GBA and GAB ultimately when multiplied get result in the same uh, value so this way what happens is that B the user B has his own key and knows G but doesn't really know the specific value of A here and the same goes for this guy where A knows his value as well as the uh, the random prime number but he doesn't know the uh, the secret key of B and this way because he doesn't know the secret key of B he has to go ahead and just use this combination to do the encryption and decryption and they're able to exchange information with each other without necessarily knowing each other's keys 
and this is basically what symmetric key encryption is all about now having said that this particular combination has a flaw in it which is basically it is susceptible to something called man in the middle attacks in a man in the middle attack what happens is somebody else would be present in the middle between the two layers and he would intercept the communications between uh, user A and user B so instead of user A and user B actually having uh, uh, a combination like GA over here if we call this hacker or whoever he is the guy that who's, who's in the middle he might be H so H, you would actually have a combination HA instead of GA and that way he's able to encrypt and decrypt your communications by pretending to be the end recipient when uh, you look at it so H would be somewhere in the middle here and he would pretend like as if he's B and similarly when B is sending communication he would pretend that he's A and this kind of way to intercept the communication between the two of them is one of the drawbacks of using a symmetric key because you don't really validate who user B is because you don't really use their secret key or anything of that sort so you need some way to authenticate that the message is coming to you is actually coming from the user B and not somebody else who's kind of infiltrated the network and this is where asymmetric keys play a crucial role because it helps not only encrypt and decrypt the information but it also establishes that the inf message could only have come from the person uh, user A or user B and anybody else who comes in b in between wouldn't be able to go ahead and pretend by just intercepting the communications and generating their own hash values in the middle so that's what we're going to talk about in the next video I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching